ladies, gentlemen, and every magnificent thing between and outside, this is the Envoy of Kairos, back to wish you happy holidays, and give you a special Christmas-themed presentation for the Mesopus region. So, quick recap. Mesopus is a region based on Mesopotamia and the surrounding landmasses east and south of the Zagros Mountains. So far, I've heavily covered a lot of Pokémon inspired by the Turkish part of the region, but there's one thing in that area I've missed. A lot of people don't know this, but St. Nicholas himself, the real one, originally lived in Myra, in southern Turkey. If I'm working with a region where the man himself lived, you know I just have to make some Christmas Pokémon in reference to him. And don't worry, I'll make references to Hanukkah, Ramadan, and so on throughout the region as well. So, where do our holiday festivities begin? How about a new evolution for a familiar face, with a gimmick we've only seen once so far? I'm sure you all remember Chingling, sweet little bell that received very little love in this series, save for James Chimeco in the anime. Well, what if it got a festive new evolution? This is Ching Cheer. Obviously, it's meant to be a string of sleigh bells, held together by a festive red and white rope, matching that of its pre-evolution. But on a much larger scale, I've also turned two of the bells into functional arms with tiny but effective metal digits. Ching Cheer is quite a bit bigger than its contemporary from Sinnoh, but its size is largely for the sake of its ability. That ability is called Sleigh Bell, and it activates in presence of a Sauce Buck during a double battle. Yep, I'm adapting some tricks from our big aquatic friends up north in Paldea. Ching Chir equips itself to a Sauce Buck, producing an original form with some interesting capabilities. This Sauce Buck adapts to any and all buffs that Ching Chir has gained, adapts its HP in addition to its own, and gains stab in both of Ching Chir's types, Psychic and, of course, Fairy. Added to their own Grass and Normal types, this makes a Bonded Sauce Buck a true force to be reckoned with. Now Don Dozo might have a bit more to worry about, but that's all for these two. So, we all know the Sleigh Bells and Reindeer are the calling card of someone much bigger. We all know Delibird, and I think it's about time they finally evolve and bring us the jolly form we've all wanted to see. So, this is Charity. Obviously, their name is based on Charity and Cheer, an all-too-fitting name for a Santa-themed Pokémon. They happen to have dropped their flying type for Fairy, and come with a new ability I call the List. This Pokémon keeps track of how many times any Pokémon in play has buffed or debuffed another Pokémon. It then bases the effect of present off these results. So foes who've done a lot of debuffing will end up getting hit with particularly strong explosive presence, while those who've buffed others will be gifted with a plethora of healing. Making Charity a tanky support unit is pretty easy, and it discourages opponents using too many debuffs on your party by ensuring that support becomes a sweeper if they do. Whether naughty or nice, you're on the list, and you'll get what you deserve. But, speaking of naughty, there's some lore to be found here. In the far north of Myra, homes are carved from the stone face of a cliff, an ancient site that, in reality, is off-limits. But here in the Mesopus region, you're free to explore, and find the inside of the cave is unnaturally cold, thanks to the abundance of Delibird and Charity here. Many of them seem pensive and defensive, guarding the inner chambers. Deep within, you can find a sealed chamber, with a sigil suggesting three locks guarded by three Pokémon. Here, you may find three ghost types, a shiny Chandelure, Trevenant, and Dusk Noir. If all three of these ghosts are defeated, the door is unlocked, and you can travel deeper. 
Here you may find one Pokémon only tangentially connected to Christmas in Mass. A new convergence of Sableye I call Spelunkly. This is a rock dark type based on a lesser known cryptid known in America as a Tommyknocker. They have variants in many countries with various other names, but they all have a few things in common. They tend to be little gnomish jerks made of coal, who tunnel through old mines, attack miners who show their homes and themselves no respect, and constantly prank people. Spelunkali are completely blind, instead relying on hearing, smell, and taste to get around. They keep pieces of flint and shale on their heads and in their feet. More sensitive to sound than the coal and coal dust their bodies are largely composed of, they can be found in mines all over the world, but tend to be reclusive, especially once tunnels are lit and they lose their advantage in the dark. But why include them here if they're only tangentially connected? Well, much like Carbink, on rare occasions, after living and growing for thousands of years, a Spelunkali may evolve into an excessively rare Pokémon of mythical status. This is Crampic. Crampic is a vile, angry thing, so greedy and voracious for everything of value its caves have to offer, that it even plucked the solid coal from its own body to stash in the bottomless pit of the cart on its back. If you steal from it, or what it considers its territory, you may even be added to the cart, never to return. Of course, Krampik is based on the infamous Krampus, the demonic opposite of jolly old Saint Nick, existing to punish bad children, but in modern day considered increasingly cruel and unnecessary. Of course, the association with coal is taken from how modern Santa treats bad children in modern folklore, but also all too fitting for a Pokémon dedicated to the spirit of greed and toxic consumerism of the modernized holiday. You may note the single piece of solid coal on the end of their tail. This is so Krampik can guide and command a small army of Spelunkli, all of whom see the one piece of Krampik's collection they can reach as the ultimate prize. A wealthy man promising scraps to those beneath him, and never providing. Krampik's ability is an interesting new addition. Any Pokémon that damages it has its attack stats both reduced in retribution. This can stack up rather quickly, and paired with learning punishment, they're designed to keep their foes down. But this also makes them particularly weak to charity, as they should be. And no matter how vile and powerful they are, the Pokémon truly embodying the spirit of Christmas is still their bane. Well, that's all I have for you for the holidays. Now that it's all done, I can return to work on the next big leg of the Mesopus journey. I hope you're all looking forward to it, and if you made it this far, I'm sure you enjoyed these Christmas-themed Pokémon as my last gift to you all this year. Happy Holidays, everyone. This is the Envoy of Kairos. Signing out, and I'll see you all next year for more Mesopus content faster than ever. Thanks for watching, guys.